start tayo. Ang partnership, uh, ano yan eh, parang same lang yan ng sole proprietorship, di ba? Same lang din yan ng corporation. Pinagkaiba lang, madami yung uh, members ng partnership. Okay, yung sole proprietorship, alam mo naman na iisa lang yung uh, iisa lang yung owner, which is the uh, the proprietor. Sa partnership, iba. Madami, madaming owner. So, sige. So, let's start partnership formation and operation. First, we must define partnership. Alam mo naman yung definition ng partnership, di ba? Dapat memorize mo yan. Okay. Ano yun? So, ano yung uh, definition ng partnership? So, partnership is defined as association of two or more persons. ba? Diba? Gas-gas na gas-gas na definition ng partnership. Two or more persons bind themselves to contribute money, property, or industry to a common fund with the intention of dividing profits among themselves. Yung partnership dito sa Pilipinas, govern siya ng partnership law. Hindi naman tayo magdi-discuss ng partnership law kasi sa higher accounting mo na yan. Uh, sa higher subjects ng uh, accountancy, which is business law. Pero, dapat alam mo yung basic uh, kahit definition lang. Or yung mga advantages, disadvantages, paano mag-form ng partnership, kahit yung mga legal... Uh, implications, hindi na muna itakel. Basta alam mo yung definition. Ritz. Yes po. Okay. So, as partnership is defined, association of two or more per person. Actually, uh, ano na lang, uh, para sa akin is, uh, same lang siya ng sole proprietorship. Kasi, Di ba yung uh, sole proprietorship, kinocompose lang din naman ng assets, correct? Liabilities and equity. So, same lang siya ng formula kung, kung baga sa basic na equation ng accounting. So, basic accounting equation, assets is equal to liabilities plus equity pa rin. Okay? Pinagkaiba nga lang niya kasi sa equity, doon sa sole proprietorship, isa lang yung owner, which is the proprietor. Sa equity, maraming owner. They are called uh, partners. ba? Diba? Partner yung tawag sa kanila. Okay, merong uh, silent partner, merong industrial, merong capitalist. Kasi, sabi, sabi sa definition ng accounting o oh, ng partnership, two or more persons bind themselves to contribute money, pwedeng uh, pera, Pwedeng property, pwedeng industry yung i-contribute or i-invest ng isang partner. Okay? So, money, property, or industry to a common fund. What is a common fund? Simply means equity to a common fund with the intention of dividing the profits among themselves. So, habang uh, nag-grow-grow yung partnership, syempre, may profits yan, di ba? Yung profits or losses ay i-distribute sa mga partners kasi yun naman yung uh, objective ng isang partnership. So, sa para mas madali lang, isipin mo lang, ano pa rin siya? Uh, basic accounting equation. Assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. Pinagkaiba nga lang, equity, maraming partner, Maraming owners. Okay? Ano yung pwedeng i-contribute? Money, property, or industry. Yun yung pinaka-basic na uh, concept ng partnership. So, sa partnership formations, lahat ng assets kinocontribute sa partnership, nire-record ni partnership. Okay? Sige. So, partnership formation, binubuo natin yung partnership. Paano nabubuo yung partnership? Siyempre, may mag invest na partner. Yun naman yung pinakauna, di ba? So, mag may mag invest na partner ng whether assets or 
i-assume ng partnership yung liability ni partner. Okay? So, ano yung, ano, ano yung uh, assets? It is either monetary or non-monetary. So, yung monetary basically means pera. Pera yung kinokontribute ni partner. Okay? Sa non-monetary naman, it is property na kinokontribute ni partner. Meron ding isa, pero hindi nire-record sa libro ni uh, partnership, hindi nire-record sa libro ng partnership accounting, is the industry. Okay? Hindi naman yan nire-record kasi yung uh, investment, kung industry yung i-invest mo, ikaw yung partner, yung ano lang, yung skills mo, yung intellect, like ako, magbubuo ako ng partnership, Uh, CPA naman ako, so meron akong uh, accounting skills na pwedeng iambag sa partnership, yun yung industry. Okay? So, hindi naman kailangan pera yung i-invest mo. Pwede ding uh, skill, pwede ding uh, yung intellect mo, yung kakayahan mo. Pwede rin yung i-invest sa partnership. So, punta tayo sa monetary. Monetary, pwedeng cash. Ay, ang pangit ng sulat. Pwedeng cash, pwedeng accounts receivable. AR. So, sa non-monetary, ito na yung mga buildings. Pwede kang mag-invest ng truck. Pwede kang mag-invest ng uh, barko, building. Uh, inventory, kung meron man. So, yun yung non-monetary. So, monetary, monetary assets are valued at, isulat mo na lang, face value. Always yan. It is recorded as face, at face value. Yun yung general rule. Okay? Exception, kung may mga monetary assets na kailangang i-value at fair value. Okay? General rule, face value, exception, fair value. So, tandaan mo na lang yung sulat ko ha, kasi dito sa PowerPoint, uh, nahihirapan ako. Sige. It's okay, I'm taking notes. So, sa monetary, val monetary assets, general rule, face value. Anong meaning ng face value? Kung ano yung value ng pera, yun na yun. For example, mag-invest uh, ako ng 1,000. Mag-invest ako ng 100,000. Ano yung i-record ko sa partnership? Yun na yun. 1,000 or 100,000. For example, nag-invest ako ng 1 million. Yung i-record sa libro ni partnership is 1 million. Yun yung meaning ng face value. Okay? Exception na lang yung fair value. Bakit may exception? Bakit uh, may uh, pinavalue yung monetary assets sometimes at fair value? Uh, kasi, Meron tayong accounting standard na nagsasabi na i-record mo siya at fair value. For example, meron tayong uh, mga monetary uh, assets other than cash. Nakadinig ka na ba ng mga short-term investments, yung mga money market placements, ganun, ba? Diba? Yung mga time deposits. Binavalue sila at fair value. Okay? So, sa non-monetary assets naman, so ulitin ko, monetary assets, general rule, face value. Okay? Exception, fair value sa monetary assets. Sa non-monetary assets, ano yung mga example ng non-monetary assets? Sabi ko kanina, building, inventories, uh, PPE, yung mga... Uh, trailer trucks, yung mga 
uh, company vehicles, motor, uh, yung mga pickups, yung mga ibang mga assets other, na hindi naman monetary. For example, yung mga tools, ginagamit nating mga tools sa ating partnership, yun yung non-monetary. So, number one, paano i-value yung assets na non-monetary? Number one, it should be valued at agreed value. Sulat ko na lang dito, AV. So, uh, kung mag-decide yung partnership na i-value siya based on the agreed value, pwede yan. Yun yung number one na valuation niya or measurement. Okay? Kung wala naman silang pinag-agrihan na, na agreed value, wala naman silang uh, pinag-agrihan na value, for example, itong van, i-value natin at 800,000. Kasi medyo luma naman siya and parang mas maganda na i-value siya sa 800,000. So, nag-agree yung lahat ng partners yung value niya is 800,000. Okay? Pero, kung walang pinag-agrihan or walang agreement, you will value it as fair market value. FMV. So, number one, agreed value. Kung walang agreed value, fair market value. Okay? Ano yung fair market value? Ito yung price sa merkado. For example, bibili ako ng uh, uh, Toyota High Ace sa Toyota Tacloban. Yung, uh, yung fair market value ng isang bagong Toyota is 1.5 million. Okay? Tapos yung i-invest ni, ni A, yung i-invest ni partner A is bagong Toyota din. Pero hindi niya alam yung value. Wala naman kayong pinag-agrihang uh, amount kung uh, magkano yung i-record. That's the time magbibase tayo sa fair market value. So susundin natin yung 1.5 million na valuation which is fair market value fair siya para sa lahat di ba and based siya sa market value okay so number three, kung walang fair market value yung susundin niyo is the book value okay ano yung book value ito yung cost, less accumulated depreciation, ito yung book value niya. ba? Diba? Kung ano yung cost, i-less mo yung depreciation today, kung today ka mag invest yun yung book value mo. Okay? Pero in rare cases lang yan kung walang fair market value. Book value yung gagamitin. Okay? So, ano-ano pang assets? Siguro, uh, wala namang ibang assets, di ba? It's, it is either monetary or non-monetary. Alam mo na monetary, alam mo na yung non-monetary. Paano i-record? Alam mo na din. General rule, face value, exception, fair value. Okay? Sa non-monetary naman, agreed value, number one. Number two, fair market value. Number three, book value. So, hierarchy yan sila. Parang uh, kung walang 1, punta ka sa 2. Kung walang 2, punta ka sa 3. So, ganun lang yung pagbabalyo ng assets. So, okay na tayo sa assets na in-invest. Paano naman if liability? Pwede ba? Pwede, pwede pala mag-invest ng isang liability sa partnership? The answer is uh, no. Pwede mo lang i-assume, pero hindi siya invest kasi yung ini-invest lang is assets. ba? Diba? Wala ka namang ini-invest na liability. Yung proper term dyan is assume. 
Ina-assume ng partnership yung pagkakautang ng partner. For example, yung biniling uh, yung ininvest na Toyota Hi Ace, yung Toyota Hi Ace ni partner A is meron pa palang babayaran. So naka-installment payment pala. So sabi ni uh, yung partners A B C nag-agree sila na babayaran na lang ni partnership yung utang sa, sa Toyota kasi ginagamit naman yung sasakyan ni partnership. Tapos, ininvest naman yung Toyota na sasakyan. So, yung uh, remaining liability or remaining na babayaran sa Toyota, takloban, is i-assume yan ni partnership. Okay. So, yung liability is hereby assumed by the partnership. Pero yung uh, problema natin, paano i-record yung liability? Yung liability, i-record mo at net present value. Or tinatawag na NPV. Okay? So, NPV or net present value, may computation kasi yan eh. Pero sa partnership, it is, uh, it is most likely given kasi may uh, mahirap mag-compute ng net present value. Siguro, for example purposes, binibigay na naman yung value ng uh, liability na i-assume ni partnership. For example, yung biniling uh, Toyota kanina ni partner A, which is 1.5 million, yung kanyang fair market value, meron pa palang natitirang bayarin, which is 500,000, yung kanyang net present value. Therefore, yung 500,000, i-record mo ngayon as liability na ni partnership. Okay? Kasi nag-agree naman yung lahat ng partners na i-assume na lang yung liability. Pero, what if sa problem, hindi, nag, uh, hindi, hindi nagsabi kung ano ang kung in ni partnership or hindi? Ano yung, uh, ano yung assumption natin? Rates. Uh, I-assume ba natin na in siya ni partnership or hindi tayo mag a -assume? Ano sa tingin mo? Hindi yung... tayo mag... Sa tingin ko, hindi tayo mag assume Yes, correct. Kasi meron tayong rule sa accounting, di ba? Do not assume unless otherwise stated. So, pag liability, conservatism principle, in favor of uh, yung liability kasi parang disadvantage yan para sa partnership, eh, di ba? Kung i-record mo, magkakaroon tuloy ng liability yung partnership. So, to be conservative, kung wala namang in-state sa problem, huwag mong isama. Okay? Sige. And then, equity. Sa equity, sa formation, it is only the residual value. After deducting all of the assets and uh, netting all the liabilities. Meaning, uh, lahat ng assets, bawasan ng liability, yun na yung partnership equity natin. Okay? Yung pinagkaiba nga lang, sabi ko nga kanina, madaming partners yung nag-share dito sa equity. Okay? So, after mong malaman yung assets, after mong uh, malaman yung liabilities, after mong ma-appreciate yung partnership formation, which is basically accounting equation lang talaga siya. Yung partnership, pinagkaiba nga lang dun sa equity kasi madaming partners. Yun lang talaga yung pagkakaiba ng partnership at saka yung sole proprietorship. Uh, accounting equation pa rin yan. 
dun ka lang, dun ka magfo-focus sa foundation ng concept mo. So, ngayon, at least meron ka ng concept doon sa partnership formation. So, let's try. Okay lang. May, meron ka bang calculator dyan? Meron ko. Ah, sige. So, sagot tayo. Kahit ano lang, ilang exercises. Para ma-appreciate natin. So, nakikita mo yung screen ko, di ba? Hindi naman siya malabo, I think. Uh, yes, but it's very clear. Sige. On December 1, 2015, EE and FF formed a partnership agreeing to share for profits and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 3. So, tandaan mo, 2 is to 3, respectively. EE invested a parcel of land that cost him 25000 Si FF naman, in-invest niya 30000 cash. So, the land was sold for 50000 on the same date. Yung land na benta, sa same date na nag-invest siya. So, 3 hours after the formation of the partnership, how much should be the capital balance of EE after, right after the formation? Okay, sige. Ibasahin mo muna and then you try to answer. Okay, pa. Hello, Ritz? Yes, po. So, meron ka ng sagot? So, ano ko po answer for the capital balance for EE right after the formation is 50. 50? 1,000 po. 1,000? Yes, po. Okay. So, uh, i-discuss natin yung answer, no? Based sa uh, concept na sinulat natin kanina, which is assets equal to liabilities plus equity. Sige. So, sabi natin kanina, assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. Basic accounting equation yan. Meron bang liability na, na ano yun? Yung, meron bang liability na na-discuss dito? Mukhang wala, no? Mukhang walang wala inassume na liability. Therefore, puro lang tayo assets. Assets is equal to liability. Zero naman yung liability. Yun na yung magiging equity or capital balance. So, yung tanong dito, what is or how much should be the capital balance of EE right after the formation? Okay. Actually, yung sagot mo ay tama. Di ba? Yung CEE nag-invest ng parcel of land that cost him 25,000. The land was sold for 50,000 on the same day. Bakit 50,000 yung uh, sinagot mong answer? Kasi yung land is considered monetary or non-monetary? 
Non-monetary. Non-monetary diba? po. Opo, kasi hindi naman siya pera or hindi naman siya cash na in-invest. Diba? Land. Non-monetary. So, ano yung number one assumption natin dito? Yung uh, valuation natin, agreed value. May diniscuss ba sa problem na nag-agree sila na ganito yung amount na ire-reflect sa partnership? Wala naman, di ba? None. So, let's move to number two. Fair market value. May diniscuss ba na fair market value? Mm. Sa may problem. Po. Oh, yes, meron kasi may, uh, eh, kung land was sold for 50,000 on the same day, it is considered the fair value. Kahit, sin kahit sinabi pa ng problem, the land was sold uh, five hours later on the same day. Fair value pa rin yan. The land was sold uh, Uh, one minute before the formation of the partnership, fair value pa rin yan. The land was sold for 50,000 the day, the day after the formation. Pwede pa rin yan as long as walang given na data sa problem na magkaiba yung fair value niya. So, i-assume natin na pareho. Kahit a day after pa yan, 50,000 yung fair value niya, it is still considered fair value 50,000. Correct? So, tama yung answer mo. Capital balance of EE right after the formation, 50,000. Okay? Medyo, medyo ano ba? Medyo okay lang yung discussion? Okay lang po. Pwede po mag-ask. Sige, sige. How to use the ratio po yung 2 and 3? Ah, okay. Good question. Kasi, Actually, yung mga problem sa partnership, madaming information. So, itong uh, agreeing to share for profits and losses in the ratio of 2 is to 3, irrelevant yan sa problem. Kasi nasa formation pa lang tayo. Pwede, pwede naman magamit yan sa formation if there are incidental Profits or losses during the formation. So, okay. for example, nag-invest si uh, partnership ng Toyota High Ace na sasakyan. Tapos eventually, right after the formation, binenta nila. So, yung sagot dyan, uh, kung may losses, Kung may losses ng partnership sa pagbebenta ng Toyota High Ace, for example, 1.5 million, tapos binenta nila at 1.3, right after the formation, nagkaroon ng loss ng 200,000, pwede yung magamit na profit or losses ratio sa pag-distribute pag ng uh, initial balance or capital balance of EE. For example, si EE. Uh, nag-invest ng Toyota High Ace, tapos binenta niya yung 1.5 million, binenta lang niya at 1.3. So, si EE, yung capital balance niya, dapat deducted na dito yung losses ng pagbebenta. For example, 1.5 less 1.3, may 200,000 na loss. Yung 200,000, i-distribute to all, uh, all of the partners, to EE and FF, tapos, yun na yung magiging capital balance ni EE right after the formation. Kung binenta right after the formation, pwede, pwede yung magamit na profit or loss ratio. Pero, uh, general rule, ginagamit yan talaga sa partnership operation. Kasi profits and losses for the year, yung uh, general assumption dyan profits or losses for the year. Okay? Sige, next problem tayo. Rich, on March 1, 2015, II and JJ formed a partnership with each contributing the following assets. Cash, 300,000 for II. 
JJ 700,000 Machinery and Equipment 250,000 for II 750,000 for JJ Okay Building Wala Walang in-invest si II But si JJ is meron 2,250,000 And Furnitures and Fixtures 100,000 for II For JJ Wala Okay The building uh, is subject to mortgage loan of 800,000, which is to be assumed by the partnership uh, agreement that provides that II and JJ share profits or losses. And dito na naman, may profits and losses na naman na 30% and 70%. Okay? On March 1, 2015, the balance of JJ's capital account should be Sige, you try to answer din. Hello, Ritz. Yes, pa. Nag-answer pa po ako right now. Ah, okay. Sige, sige. Just tell me kung tapos ka na. Okay? Sige. Okay, pa.
I'm a Kuya Jobs. Yes, yes. My answer po is uh, the capital amount of JJ is ano po? 2,030,000. 2,030,000. Okay. Yes po. At first glance nakaka ano no? nakaka overwhelm yung information kung ano yung ipipick up na mo na answer or yung mga amounts kasi madaming discussion about yung iba-ibang uh, in-invest tapos may mortgage loan pa so at first maaano ka talaga ma-overwhelm but uh, yung uh, yung pinaka secret lang dito sa pagsasagot sa partnership is basahin mo muna yung uh, tanong. Kasi if babasahin pa natin kung madaming discussion, like itong problem na to, kung maraming discussion, you will lose time tapos hindi ka makakafocus kung ano yung hinahanap ng problem. So, unahin muna natin yung tanong On March 1, 2015, the balance of JJ's capital account should be, tapos doon na natin basahin ulit yung uh, uh, problem. Okay? Kasi sa qualifying exam, ilang oras lang? 3 hours? 3 hours. 3 hours. Kaya nga eh, parang kukulangin ka talaga sa time if uh, problem solving yung exam. So, JJ's capital account should be So, 700,000 plus 750 plus 2,250. Kasi yun naman yung fair market value niya. Wala namang uh, diniscuss na fair market value yung uh, may ibang amount na fair market value. So, ilas mo lang yung 2,250 less 800,000. So, ulitin natin. 700,000 plus 750 plus 2250 less 800,000 Yung answer is 2,900,000 Okay? Yung profits and losses na 30% and 70% ah uh, walang bearing yan kasi wala namang Uh, profits or losses during the partnership formation. Okay? So, diretso ka lang. Add, tapos direct ng 800. Sige. Next problem tayo? Uh, okay. That's why I got 2,000, oh, 2,030,000 kay and 2,900,000 is gain times ko pa ha, 70%. Ah, okay. Ang tunay, multiply Ay. by 70%. Oh, po. Ah, okay. Sige. Di rin, right. uh, hindi na siya i- mumultiply by 70% kasi that's his share na. Okay? Excluding pa yan yung kay JJ. So, 70% na 2,900,000 Actually, hindi nga, wala nga bearing yung 70% eh, kasi profits or losses yan. Hindi naman yan yung capital ratio. Kasi iba yung capital ratio, iba yung profit or loss ratio. Yung capital ratio, usually yun yung ginagamitan ng, uh, yun yung minimultiply ng 70%, yung dinidivide by 70, tapos minimultiply ng 30%, parang ganun. Pero ito, profit or profit and loss ratio. Stick ka lang sa profit. Kung may profit, i-distribute mo by 30%, 70%. Kung may losses, i-distribute mo 70%, 30% on the date of formation. Okay? Pero kung ganito, wala namang sinabi na may profit or losses, walang bearing. Uh, okay. Pero... In some other, ano po, in some other mga answer yan po, there, may dito stated na profit or loss. Oh, may, yes, meron. Merong uh, capital ratio, merong, uh, yung iba kasi yung ginagamit nila is agreed ratio. Uh, I, I think naka-encounter ka naman yata nun. Agreed ratio, capital ratio, tapos 
uh, kung wala talagang reference ng agreed ratio or capital ratio, gamitin mo na lang profit and loss ratio. Pero ano na yan? Parang in, uh, kung wala na talagang choice na pinapag, dapat gamitan siya ng ratio pero walang agreed, walang capital ratio, gamitan mo na lang ng profit or loss. Pero in rare, rare cases lang, mararamdaman mo na yan sa problem. Okay? Sige. Okay, okay.